unto the Lord, for he is good, for he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, for he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. For he is good. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom should I be afraid? God's light shines in the darkness. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Rosen Christian Reformed Church. Happy Father's Day. Amen. On this day. Uh, we're grateful for uh, the fathers in our church, the father figures, those who have come along and cared for uh, with love and, and nurturing love and also with strength. Thank you to the fathers on this day. Uh, we're thinking about you especially. So um, people have been asking about what we're going to do for worship. Um, here's the deal. I sent it out, but I want to be clear again. July 19, we will be worshiping together outside in the parking lot, socially distanced. We'll be wearing masks, uh, but we will have service outside July 19. Up until that time, we are going to continue to record these videos, send them out to you. We hope that they have been good for your soul. Uh, certainly has been good for us to come and record together. Uh, but we do look forward to the time, July 19th, when we're able to worship together. A special guest, although she's no guest, she's part of uh, this church family for a long time. But Deacon Felicia uh, Williams is going to pray for us now. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you saying thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing us another day to be with each other, dear Lord. Thanking you for the sun, the rain, the storms, the sky. Thank you for healing people, dear Lord. Yes. Thank you for David's brother coming home, yes, dear Lord. Heavenly Father. It thank is you, truly Lord. a blessing, thank dear you. Lord. Thank you for Sabrina and Carolyn for their healing and my family and their healing, dear Lord. Dear Lord, thank you for loving us, oh, loving us more than we could ever love ourselves, dear yes. Heavenly Father. Thank you for our protection, dear Lord. Thank you for the peace, love, and joy, and mercy that you give us every day, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for Rosen Christian Ministry, being a help in this community, feeding people, five to six days out of a week, dear Lord. It is truly a blessing, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for the pastor. Thank you for the minister of music, David. Thank you for Mr. Glenn Hudson, dear Lord. And thank you for the congregation, dear Heavenly Father, that we truly miss seeing, dear Lord. Thank you for the staff and volunteers here at Rosen Christian Ministry. And thank you for the work that everybody is doing around the world to help one another, dear Lord. Thank you that you are the light of our salvation, yes, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, I hold up before you people that are in need, mm -hmm. people that need shelter, dear yes, Lord, people that suffer with mental illness, dear Lord, people that is fighting this virus that's going on, dear Heavenly Father, please continue to protect them and heal them at all times, dear Heavenly Father. And dear Heavenly Father, the, vi the violence, dear Lord. Mm -hmm. Please continue to open people's eyes to what is going on out here in the world. We don't need violence, dear Lord. We need love yes. and peace, dear Heavenly Father. Please allow us to love one another in times like this, Lord, we need to love one another. Dear Heavenly Father, I hold up for you people that's incarcerated, dear Heavenly Father. People that's at all types of hospitals, from children to adults, dear Lord. Dear Lord, and thank you for the people on the front lines that have been protecting people and trying to help heal them and recover them from the sicknesses and diseases that's going on, dear Lord and for places being open for people to be fed and clothed, dear yes. Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. Dear Heavenly Father, as the pastor 
bring forth the word, dear Lord. Allow him to move out the way, dear Lord, and let it be your words where we will let it sink in our minds, heart, and soul, dear Lord, and apply it to our everyday life, dear Heavenly Father. So one day when we leave here, we will see you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Good morning, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. And let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen.
servant decrease that you may increase let your anointing fall on me for this time for this moment that I may preach to your people thus said the Lord your God and truly you are great so I must decrease that you increase we need you right now Father be with me as I go forward. Be with us as we go forward. In your son Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Happy Father's Day. I almost forgot, and it's funny, I've been talking with people all this week about Father's Day. But when I just heard it early again when Pastor Joe said Happy Father's Day, I said, oh yeah, that's right, Sunday is Father's Day. So I'm preaching for Father's Day, that's all right. You know, I became a father a little over 12 years ago. And it was strange because I married a woman. She already had a child. But over the years, I learned a lot about fatherhood. It's more than in what's in your genes. Biological dads and mothers, nothing wrong with it. But God has given me a love that goes beyond my genes. He taught me how to love because he first loved me. And one of my greatest fears was what kind of father would I be? Because growing up, I had seen a lot of examples and not a lot of good ones. But God blessed me. He put some good people in my life. And he helped me decipher what was right and what was wrong. And even in the wrong that I've seen, he gave me understanding that this isn't right, but you can make it. That isn't right, this is how you should do it. He always seemed to put someone, now let me rephrase that, he always put someone in my life when I needed them to give me direction, to give me hope when there was no hope, to help me understand his fear. And that's something I'm going to be speaking on. That's what I'm going to be speaking on today. Fear not. If you would, journey with me into the book of Matthews, chapter 10, starting at verse 24. We'll be reading down to 39. Jesus sends out the 12. He called his, oh, I'm sorry, I went to the wrong place already, 24. A student is not above his teacher nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the student to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Ooh, look at God. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. 
Whosoever acknowledges me before men, I will acknowledge I will acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whosoever disowns me before man, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be his mem will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whosoever finds his life will lose it. And who's Whosoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Amen. That speaks for itself. It's something about the word of God. When you read it, when you hear it, it changes you. I don't understand how anyone can pick up a Bible and read it and not be changed. There's something about what the word has to say that lets me know that no man could have did this apart from a God. Apart from someone who has all wisdom and knowledge and all understanding of what's going on. Because see, us, we as men by our very nature, we're selfish, self-centered a lot of ways, and self-concern. So if we wrote the Bible, the last thing we would do is make the Bible tell on us. For more people, this Bible will tell you who more people is than anything, any book ever written. I read some books by Sigmund Freud and other psychologists and psychoanalysts and all these other theories of people about man and man's nature. But the more I read the Bible, the more understanding I get. I'm not amazed by a lot of things. With so much that's going on in our world right now, the most amazing thing to me is how consistent the Bible is about what's going on. We're perplexed on every side. People are fearful. Remember when the pandemic first started and people went out and started buying things. And one of the items that people were buying that I am perplexed to this day trying to understand is why were people going out and buying so much toilet paper? I ain't figured that one out yet. This in fact that I understood. Wipes and everything else I understood. But what was the purpose of buying up all the toilet paper? It's like somebody went in the store and saw somebody else buying an extra roll or two, and they said, well, I better get some of that, too. Fear is funny, but fear is powerful. Let's look. I wanted to look at something. I'm going to look at something with me. The definition of fear as of now, it says an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain, or a threat. You know what it said? It says likely to cause pain or a threat. Doesn't say that it will. You know, sometimes our greatest enemy when it comes to fear is ourself. We create monsters in our life. We create circumstances that don't exist. We're fearful of people who have no power. But in the passage of scripture today, Jesus speaks about some people that had power. Now, there are people we should be fearful of, but not to the point where we can't get what God has for us to get done done. Hear me now. Fear as a verb. To be afraid of someone or something as likely to be dangerous, painful, or threatening. 
Now notice when fear be, goes from being a noun to a verb, that means action goes behind it. There are people with power that can cause you pain. One of the greatest fears of man is to be killed. One of the greatest powers that man has is the power to kill. In America, we call it capital punishment. Man will use capital punishment to punish people they say they committed murder or crimes that are so excessive that they don't deserve to live. But that power can be abused. And that's what happens. And that's what was one of the things that was going on in our passage of scripture. The Roman Empire used death and they found the worst ways possible to kill people. And they would kill them in the public square to make sure that the Jews seen what was going on. And it's something about watching someone suffer. And one of the worst ways that people were seen to suffer was when they were put on the cross. And when our Savior was put on the cross, imagine the shame of the Jewish people who had only a few weeks before, or seven days actually before, called him their king. Jesus, when he sent out the twelve, gave them a commission, but he put some thoughts in their minds and he let them know. On one hand, he was telling them, it's time for you to go out. But before he had sent the twelve out, he spoke with them in private. And what I like about when he spoke with them in private was it was just between him and them. But Jesus said, what I'm telling you may be a secret right now to the people out there. But when I get through telling you and when you get through learning, I'm sending you out there. And I can't have you go out there and be fearful. So let me let you know something. There's some things out there to fear. Years, many years ago, Winston Churchill said, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Which when I first heard it used to sound, sounded so crazy to me. Oh, we get something to fear. When I was young, I had an uncle. I feared that man. And I feared him because if he told me he was going to do something, when it comes to whooping your behind, he did it. He didn't just say it. It wasn't a threat. When he said it, it was a promise. So he had, I had a fear of my uncle, but that fear was not a fear of reverence. Because Jesus wanted the disciples to not be fearful of what the Romans could do, but of the God that they served. But he didn't want them to be scared of God but he wanted them to reverence God for who he was. He said, the Romans going to scare you. They going to threaten you. They going to threaten your life. But I got some news for you. They can take your body, but they can't take your soul. So only God can destroy the body and the soul. Man can only take your body. Some of the greatest letters in the history of from Christians that was written was written while they were locked up. Paul was in a dungeon in a prison and he was writing and telling people be of good cheer. Martin Luther King was in jail and he was writing telling people it's alright we're going to get there. We're going to get the promised land. We're going to get our equal rights. And Jesus is telling the disciples, I've made you a promise. God made a promise that I would come. I'm here. 
But now I'm giving you information that you need to share with the world. That the Son indeed has come. The promise has been made. And the promise has been kept. But when I send you out and you begin to tell the story of who I am, you better get ready. Because it's about, as that old saying goes, it's about to go down. People are not going to like what they hear. And there's something about people in power. When they're challenged, they will use all the power that they have to destroy you. Look how they did Jesus. They were always sneaking around trying to catch Jesus up in the word. How can you catch the word up in the word? What John said in the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was with God. How you going to catch the word up with the word? They tried. Never succeeded. But Lord knows they tried. In the 26th verse, Jesus, so Jesus had said to them, So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. He said, I got you. Ain't nothing they can do. He said, all the lies they tell, all the untruths, everything shall come to pass. Everything they're doing in the darkness is going to come to light. The things that we're doing in the darkness. I'm telling you this at night. But he said, I want you to go out in the daylight and tell the story of what you learned. Let me stop real quick for a second to say something. We also must be prepared as Christians. Too often I see people talking about Christianity. And they talk about it as if it's simple, but even in it, there's a simplicity to it, true enough. But there's also a need to know. You need to know what you're talking about. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us that we should always be ready to get an account of why we believe what we believe. That's Glenn Hudson paraphrase. But in other words, we should know what we're talking about. Jesus gave the disciples power to cast out spirits. Now imagine if the disciple didn't understand the functioning of that power. It was by the name of Jesus that the demons came out. And Jesus needed them to understand that. This ain't got nothing to do with you. Demons don't come out because your name is Paul. Demons don't come out because your name is Peter. The demons going to come out in the name of Jesus. There's something about fearing God. I believe it's in Psalms where it says that the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. In other words, when you start to fear of God, now you want to know who is, why do I fear him? But, but I'm not afraid of him. You fear him and I'm not afraid of him because he's loving. Because he engulfs you with his love. He engulfs you so much that he gave his only begotten son. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, Jesus was telling the disciples. And he says, when I send you out, and he's saying this to the twelve, and even to those he sent out after the twelve, if you fail to acknowledge me here, I will not acknowledge you in heaven. That's deep. Jesus is in heaven at the right hand of God. Can you imagine him not acknowledging you? I can get over people. Let me tell you something I've learned in 57 years of living. I can get over people. But I can't get over God. I can't imagine God and Jesus not recognizing me, not acknowledging me. I used to be fearful of relationships and 
how much people liked me and cared about me. But down through the years, I come to understand people are who they are. They don't like you, but they don't hate you. They are who they are. Be who you are. Be who you've been called to be. And then Jesus says something else. He says, I didn't come. He said, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. Oh, oh Lord, I thought you came to save us, to set us free, to give us eternal life, to redeem us back to your Father. But it's a little deeper than that. What Jesus is saying to us is, there's a battle going on, y'all. And I'm setting you all up for victory. There's a battle going on, but I'm setting you up for victory. Don't get lost in the headlines that's going on, y'all. There's a battle going on. There's a pandemic going on. There's protests all over the world going on. But God is saying, I'm setting you up for victory. People are dying on our left and on our right hand. But God is letting us know, fear not, I got this. I'm setting you up for victory. I don't know what the victory looks like, y'all. But I know the victory is coming. So if I was you, I do like I say I do sometimes. I just shout it out. I thank him for being the God that he is. I thank him for loving me the way he loves me. But more importantly, I thank him for loving you the way he loves you. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. We have nothing to worry about when it comes to having a good relationship with God as opposed to what the world can do to us. If you're good with God, the world can't do nothing with you. The world can't do nothing to you. Fear not. You got, I know you're going through some troubled times. People have lost their jobs. They don't know how they're going to pay their next mortgage, next rent, gas bill, light bill. Everything that's going on around us. So much negativity. Police against the people. The people against the police. The government against the people. The people against the government. You have to operate on a different plane, y'all. As Christians, God is calling us to a different battlefield. We've got to leave the world. God wants us on the battlefield on a spiritual level. For we battle not against flesh and blood. Sometimes we forget. We get caught up in what's going on around us. And God just brought it to me. I need my people on the spiritual battlefield. I need some prayer warriors. Fear not, but pray hard. Fear not the pandemic. Fear not the police that are killing our people. Fear not, said the Lord. I got you. I have overcome death from the grave. Let me close with this. When Jesus went into the when Jesus died and rose on the third day, he said something that has been with me since I was probably preteen. It's something about the way it was said. He said, I have overcome the world. 
In other words, the world doesn't have any more power, y'all. No more power. And all power, he said, in heaven and earth is given unto me. So no one here has power over me. No one here has power over you. Are you a child of the living God? Are you a man of the... Are you a woman, a child? If you are saved, this world has no power over you. The Bible tells us to look to the hills from which cometh thy help. And fear not the world around you. Fear not, said the Lord. I like one other thing. I remember when Jesus and showed his power over death when he called Lazarus from the grave. And remember when he was standing when they moved the stone and Jesus stood and he called Lazarus by his name. And when I was younger, I never understood why he didn't just say come out because we, we, knew, we knew who he was talking to. He was talking, he was going to be talking to Lazarus when he said come forth. But he said Lazarus' name for a reason. If Jesus would have just said come forth, everybody would have got up out them graves and came forth. But he only wanted one person, so he called him by his name. Say, Lazarus, come forth. When God calls you, man can't do nothing about it. And God is calling us, Rosalind. God is calling us, my Christian brothers and sisters. He's saying, fear not, come forth. I've got work for you to do. Amen. I thank you for your time. My time is up. We're going to lift up the name of the Lord and sing his praises. Praises to our King, for he is the King of Kings. Sing the praises to our King, for he is the King. We sing the praises to our King, for he is the King of Kings. We sing the praises to our King. Amen. Amen.